So today we are uh, in the book of Exodus, starting in chapter 3, and we're reading verses 7 through 12. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites have now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And he responded, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. So there's so many cool parts that we can draw out of the story of Exodus and the story of Moses. We see God's power, we see God's rescue, we see God creating a new and holy people. According to the animated film, there was also some musical numbers. But what strikes me most is that we see a God who hears. The ancient world tended to think of the gods as distant and detached. They thought that power and perfection and eternity meant being unmoved by things in the world. After all, if a god could be grieved or they could be moved or affected, that would mean change. And changing from perfection could only be less perfect. And they called this idea impassibility. And it really stuck around for a long time. Even Christianity has wrestled with this idea for a long time. If God is truly and absolutely both good and perfect, how can God be moved and not become imperfect? But that isn't at all how Scripture tells us the story of God. Instead, Scripture shows us a God who hears us. The Israelites are crying out in their desperation, in their oppression. God's perfection isn't about ignoring them. Instead, we see the great goodness and perfection of God in His compassion. The Lord hears and answers. God is moved and moves for us. God is working to bring goodness out of pain. This is the root of the courage that God demands of Moses and ultimately of us. We can be brave in the trials of this world because we have a God who is good, a God who works on our behalf. We have a God who hears in our time of need, God who is with us now and forever and always.